So when I try to think of the most devastating story that has ever happened in human history to a specific person who stands for a specific social issue, I don't think that you're going to find an example that is more catastrophic to the people involved than this story right here. And to be clear in advance, the social issue involved is harsh sentencing guidelines, okay, for violent criminals, which is hilarious because since when is that a thing to be an advocate for, okay? Like, I understand if you're like, hey man, mandatory minimums on drug laws, that's crazy. A guy's selling drugs and he gets an automatic 30 years, that's crazy. Right, 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 right. Who is taking up for violent criminals who got too much time? You know what I mean? Talk about like just destroying your credibility. He's like, well, it's really important to get these guys out of prison. These white judges with their white hate and they're putting these black people away for decades and it's just disgusting. It's like, I mean, is it about race though? You know, they're violent criminals. Maybe the judge had a good instinct about a guy, not better than my instinct. Oh yeah? <laughs> Let's see how this story plays out. What you're looking at, uh, as I'm sure that you saw from the thumbnail and the title, uh, is this is a guest on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, who was on February 1st, only five weeks ago. He accomplished what all social advocates dream of. If I could just get my message out to enough people, we can really make some change. So he did that uh, and he got on there because he knows this guy. Right, You guys may recognize this gentleman. Uh, he's been on Rogan quite a few times, uh, Josh Dubin. And then the other guy's name is Sheldon uh, something or other. I don't want to give away the game. I would go to the article that's written about this, but I mean, you guys probably already know where this is going, right? If you clicked on the video, you already know that this social justice advocate who got out of his prison sentence due to this guy getting him out of jail murdered a dude and then chopped him and put him in his freezer. And there are some details about this case that I just read. Like, obviously the headline is very sensational. It's like, Joe Rogan had this dude on his show, and then five weeks later, the guy got caught with a body in his fridge. Listen, that is far, far from the end of that story. When I read you the details of this case, you're gonna be like, Wow, <laughs> but I've talked long enough. Let's actually uh, listen to him speak a little bit. And I think you're going to laugh at the first line out of his mouth because of the irony of where this ended up. All right, let's go. And we're gonna watch, we're gonna watch him talk. Then we're gonna watch the other guy talk and you could just get a read on whether or not you would have seen that this guy's obviously a psycho. And then we're gonna get into the actual story of the dude and the body in the freezer and uh, how barbaric that actually was. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Like the video, comment, tell me what you think, and let's rock. Headline, Sheldon is guilty. <laughs> yep. Um, and I thought it would be a real interesting conversation to learn his uh, background, learn about his upbringing, learn about the crime that he committed, and hear the sentence he got which um, I don't want in hindsight was 100% appropriate and was protecting people in society and had you not gotten him out of jail the person he dismembered would still be having Thanksgiving dinner with his with his kids because he has kids that's where this is going I want to shade it and uh, inject my opinion I have a strong one but it's uh, pretty astounding how he was treated by the system. I think that there's a real interesting twist that happens at his sentencing. I think there's an interesting twist to where this story is going now that we have the following five weeks after you recorded this as context. And um, I know I've said this before, and it probably sounds repetitive, but another miracle sitting to my right, just like a, a marvelous human being who was basically told by a judge, um, by an African-American judge that you- Who apparently is better at reading people than you by 100 miles. You don't matter. He didn't say that. You don't count, and I'm gonna throw your life away. Mm, I think more so he was like, hey guy, uh, I've looked at a lot of career criminals and this guy is a violent psycho, and I'm gonna put him where he belongs so that he doesn't kill a bunch of people. 
for a crime in which the victim received two stitches. And um, on a second offense, his first offense being a gun possession charge. So I will say this, that he received a sentence that far eclipses a sentence um, that would be commonly doled out for murder or manslaughter. So with that, here's Sheldon. Sheldon, how long have you been out for? Um, going on nine months. I got out uh, May 4th. Right. So he did not make it one year from release to dismembering his neighbor. Couldn't make it. He didn't make it a year, dude. And by the way, this is just the one he got caught for, you know? Who knows how many guys this guy's actually put down, you know? Just because the crime that he got caught for originally did not result in a death does not mean this guy had not whacked people out. I would bet my life that he had, you know? And uh, again, maybe he's whacked other people out since being out that he didn't dismember. And you were in for 25? 25 years and five months. (sighs) Two stitches. Two stitches. Jesus. But one one of the things that always struck me about Sheldon um, was I didn't know him. And I got a call from these two remarkable attorneys at an organization called the Center for Appellate Litigation. Bar- hey, I, I'm just pausing here because these guys, if this, if like this story, if, if this podcast episode came out today, these guys would be like, please, God, do not say our fucking name right now. Don't say it. Don't fucking say our name, man. Whatever you do, do not say our fucking name. Barbara Zolot and Allison Hoft. <laughs> who had been working on this case for a long time. <laughs> and he's all, wait, what, what are you demonstrating? Did you just do a noose with a black person involved? I was like, no, actually this was their career. That was their career because now their names are always going to be associated with the story of they spent years trying to get this violent criminal out of prison who subsequently 10 months later killed someone's father and then put him in his freezer. If I sound like I'm being harsh on this, you know, I mean, it shouldn't. Obviously, the guy dismembered it, dude. Just wait till you hear the actual story of the crime. And if you are super impatient, I am sure I will have timestamped the where I moved to the article. It's, you know, this is much more fun, though. And... They called uh, me and Derek Hamilton and said, you know, we know you're working on some stuff with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. We have this case that is sort of hit a snag. I want you to take a look at it and um, see if you could help us. And I called Barbara back and said, I think I think that there's a mistake here because it says that he was sentenced to 50 years. Um I mean, that's no bullshit. I could not believe what I was reading. And then I read about what Sheldon had accomplished while in prison. Um, and then his earliest date of release was, I think, 20, 2049. 49. And he had already served 25 years. So um, I was just blown away by the um, level of accomplishment And the mental wherewithal that he possessed to accomplish what he did while incarcerated. I would love to hear this. But nonetheless, uh, in all seriousness, as I watch this, I feel for this guy now, dude. I this 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 guy, his whole life is this is getting, you know, people out of prison that he thinks have been wrongfully or being are being held wrongfully. This story is going to. I mean, you got to figure it's going to it's going to very greatly impact his uh, view on life. You know what I mean? Because the person that got murdered in this story, if you're if you don't feel responsible for that, if you're this dude, then uh, what movie are you watching? You got this psycho out of jail because he got his GED, you know. And he's working in the law library with his 25 years. He was like, I could either watch TV or I could start reading a couple books. And you're like, he read books. This guy chose books while he was in prison. It's like, 
Yeah. Uh, but is he a violent psycho or not? What? Did you not read his file? He got his GED. He was, he was studying law. All right. Uh, and was he juggling anything else while he was doing that? Like, it's, it's not like they're, not like they're animals, dude. They're human beings. You don't have a lot to do. Literally take every single thing that he accomplished, right? It's like, he accomplished all this. It's like, could you, how long would it take you to do that? What? How long would it take you to do all the things he did? Well, I don't know why. I'm like, if you had nothing else going on, how long would it take you? Well, this long. Okay, well, he had 25 fucking years. Whatever you're looking at, that's what he did. You know, like, <laughs> good, cool. Did he also jam an ice pick in anybody's ear? How much you want to bet? How much you want to bet that that dude, the the other guy, has called this dude and told him that he's innocent? I, how much do you want to bet that that guy has called him and told him that it's a fra it's a frame job? And this guy is sitting here listening to this like, it's a frame job. He probably believes him. I mean, I don't know. And then the path he's taken in the eight months since he's been out is, um, it's it's uh, we talk about on these episodes. How do you make change happen? He's living it and making it happen. So oh. I th thought it would be just fascinating to go through, um, like I said, his life, um, how he got to where he was, why he got this, what his thoughts are and our thoughts are on the oh sentence he God. received, why that happens too often to people of color. Um, and I know there's one thing I want. By the way, uh, if I looked snide at the beginning of this video, here's why, you know? Here's why you want to I mean, listen, dude, uh, if you want to go on Rogan and uh, start sticking flags in the ground, you know, you might get some people that are going to cover you in the way that I'm covering you in the event that the person who got out of jail dismembers his neighbor. I want to say, and then I'm going to shut up and really let Sheldon talk and you talk. Um, I get, a, I get this a lot. Why are you always bringing up race when you talk about the system? And um, my, my response to that is, if you don't talk about how it impacts the system, even for people that have been found guilty, um, it's, like, um, it's like having a conversation about President Biden and ignoring the very obvious apparent cognitive deficiencies he has. Now, you would think that you're like, oh, all right, so this is like a common sense guy, right? But don't get confused. That is a setup for what he actually wants to say. So he's like, hey, listen, guys, I'm not like one of these partisan guys who's like crazy and has Trump derangement syndrome, but uh, I'm going to point out the most obvious thing of all time, and then I'm going to follow it up with this. It would be like talking about Donald Trump and not recognizing that he seems like an unhinged lunatic. Oops. It was Oops. <laughs> An unhinged lunatic, huh? Uh, I don't want to be the guy that says it. Actually, I do. But you called Trump an unhinged lunatic while you spent months or even years of your life trying to get the dude sitting next to you out of prison who subsequently, after only being free for nine months, murdered a guy in cold blood who was begging for his life because he has kids and then he subsequently chopped up his body. But, yep, it's Trump who's an unhinged lunatic. Good job. Your, your uh, radar for unhinged lunatics, top-notch, dude. It's really impressive, actually. Now, let's just skip forward a little bit so you can listen to this dude and see how obvious it should have been uh, that this guy is a psycho. Now, uh, it's a solitary confinement facility in New York State. And um, I was on a loaf, which is also unconstitutional now. So the loaf is a, a dietary restriction that they give you. It's a chunk of bread, and it has cabbage and carrots in it, and they give you like a quarter of a cabbage, and they give you a cup of milk. When they can't take any more of your privileges, this is what they would give you. Six days out the week, on the seventh day, you would get a hot meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then it would go back for 21 days. They would do this six and one, six and one, six and one. Let me ask you a common sense question, guys. A common sense question. What did he just say? He just said, when they take away all of your privileges and there's nothing left to take away, 
That's what they do. Oh, weird. So remind me again, what do they take away privileges for in jail? Like if you're in jail and you get privileges taken away, usually what is that the result of? Uh, usually it's the result of violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Usually it's the result of violence. So how do you know that that's what they do, guy? Because you're talking about this happened to you. So was there some violence in prison also that maybe somebody should have looked at before they put you out on the street so that you could kill somebody's dad? Uh, anyway, honestly, like uh, there's nothing that interesting here other than the second I put eyes on this guy, I was like, this guy's a psycho. Like this is a dangerous person and it is incredibly obvious. Now let's hear about the, the actual details of this case. So, criminal justice reform advocate charged with murder after body parts found in his New York City apartment. Um, yeah, all right. So, the 48-year-old man, uh, body parts were found, found inside of his New York City apartment. Sheldon Johnson, charged with murder, manslaughter, and criminal possession of a weapon. He's accused of killing and dismembering a man. Police say Johnson is an ex-convict who works as a criminal justice reform advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just right in the nick of time, you know, right in the nick of time when there's definitely the worst crime, like the worst crime wave since like the 70s and 80s in New York City. But yep. Uh, so this is the part that I was talking about where I told you of like the details are gnarly. The gruesome discovery was made in the Bronx on Tuesday when authorities called uh, were called to 979 Summit Avenue in the high bridge section around 825 p.m. for a wellness check of an occupant in apartment 6G. Orlando Medina, the building superintendent, says a tenant called him around 1 a.m., Someone was pleading for their life. She said she heard two gunshots. Someone said, please don't kill me. I got a family. Something like that. And then two more gunshots pretty quickly. A torso and arms were found inside the apartment. Detectives obtained a search warrant Wednesday night for a Johnson's Harlem apartment on Fifth Avenue where they found the victim's legs and head in a freezer. Uh, the victim, later identified as 44-year-old Colin Small, had been shot once in the head. Uh, the medical examiner's office told Detective bullets fra bullet fragments were in his head. Concrete was found in the suspect's car, and investigators also recovered a Tyvek suit, officials say. So he was going to weight the body down and sink him to the bottom of the Hudson. Sounds like a person who's never uh, done something like that before. You know, hasn't certainly not a career criminal that would know how to disappear a body. Uh, he appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast last month where he talked about how he turned his life around. It was at that moment when I really said, I have to change my life. I have to change my life. I just can't do this. Uh, I had a wife. I had kids. I had a family still. My son was growing up. He was hearing stories of my so-called notoriety. I just didn't want to be that dad. <laughs> hey, you're going to be pretty fucking notorious now, guy. Um... Uh, Johnson went on a, on to talk about being a former gang member. And when he was released from prison, he, say, he said he chose to walk away from that life. Uh, when he was released from prison, he, he chose to walk away from that life. You would think that you would want to release someone from prison who's already walked away from that life. You know what I mean? Um, so bottom line, uh, and the executive director of his employer, the Queens Defenders, was also at court. They all declined to comment. Oh, geez, probably a frame job, you know, probably a frame job versus a dude who in cold blood put a bullet in the head of a guy who is crying and saying, don't kill me. I have a family, you know, one of those things. That's what happens in all seriousness. If you can't tell looking at that guy while he's talking that he's a person where if you rubbed him wrong, he might shoot you in the head. You are not good at this. Very obvious, dude. Very obvious. Anyway, it's a fucked up story. I am very curious to hear what everybody has to say about this. So uh, leave your comments and uh, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Love you guys. Bye-bye.